All right, so we're going back to linear momentum. This problem reads, water flows through a horizontal 180 degree pipe bend. Um, the flow cross-section area is a constant value of 9,000 millimeters squared. The flow velocity everywhere in the bend is 15 meters per second. The pressure and at the entrance and exit of the bend are 210 and 165 kilopascals. So we gotta calculate the horizontal X and Y components of the anchoring force needed to hold the bend in place. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're dealing with water here. Uh, we got area, they give us velocity um, at the inlet. So let's go ahead and label this point one and this point two, inlet and outlet. Uh, what else do they give us? They give us the pressures at the entrance and the exit. Uh, we got to find the X and Y components of the anchoring force. So what that means is that this pipe, uh, it's being held up right now by some force in the X direction. I guess the X direction is more like this. More into the paper. Right? And so this is F of X. And then... This is F of Y. Again, I only assume these directions. Um, I don't know if that's right. Could be pointing this way. Could be pointing down. We don't know. But the signs should fix themselves at the end. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the knowns, right? Like always, we're dealing with water. So for these problems, right, you know, you're going to do mass flow rates, which is equal to rho AV. So it's good to get the densities of the fluids you're working with, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, they give us the areas, right? Um, and the area here is the same as the area here. It's all uniform all around. So A1 is equal to A2, and that's equal to 9,000 millimeters squared. Now, we usually deal with uh, meters, right? Uh, you want to make sure everything's in meters, kilograms, newtons. Uh, stay consistent before you start plugging in. So we got to convert this piece. Again, if you don't remember, to convert millimeters squared, you know a thousand millimeters in a meter. But since it's squared, you square this, the top and the bottom. <clears throat> so 9,000 divided by 1,000, and then divided by 1,000 one more time, right, because it's squared. Uh, one squared is just one, so nothing's crazy is going to happen up top. So it's just, if you if, yeah, if you divide 9,000 by 1,000 two times, you will get 0 0.009 meters squared. So that's the area. Uh, they give us velocity, right, so... Again, V1 is equal to V2. It says the flow velocity everywhere. So that's equal to 15 meters per second. Uh, they give us the pressures. Pressure 1 is entrance is 210, exit is 165. So pressure 1 is 210. And then let's go ahead and convert that to newtons per meter squared, right? Just pascals, not kilopascals. So that is newtons per meters squared. Again, this is Pascal's. P2, that's going to be 165,000 newtons per meters squared. And they also give us uh, the angle. So usually the angle is significant when it's not a perfect 0, 90, 180, 270, or even 360, right, I guess. But it's only significant when you have like a 40, anything in between. Pretty much any other angle except those four I just gave you, or five. Because um, that's when you got to do cosine of the angle. But I'll show you how it's not significant here. But if you were to use it, um, this is how you'd use it. So I'll mention that. So let's go ahead and write that down just to, I guess, to make it easier for you. All right, cool. So let me go ahead and start the free body diagram, right? Now, nothing crazy is going on, right? We got a force here due to pressure, a force here due to pressure. We got the momentum going on and these two forces. And I don't think there's anything else. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Oh, my drawing is not the best, but 
and we'll work with what we got. Cool, so there's a pipe, right? I didn't do it in 3D just to, I mean, there's really no point, but we know there's pressure acting here. Let's go ahead and do arrows, right? Pressure's also acting right here. And it always acts against the surface. So it never acts pointing away. So always against the the inlets and the exits. Um, what else? We got mass flow rates, got right. Um, for mass flow rates, you really don't need to do anything on the free body diagram, but we know obviously velocity is going in this direction here, and it's going, 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 and it's going out, right? That's the direction of velocity. And then let's go ahead and do well. First, let me label the coordinates. It is a positive y, right? The y is going in this way, and then positive x. Doesn't matter how you label it, just be consistent. Um, we have a force, let's assume a force going up. And again, it doesn't matter any, where you place it. You can place it here, 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 here. It really doesn't matter. So let's just put an f of x here. And let's just assume a f of y here. The reason it doesn't matter, because like in real life, think about it, it's a pipe and it's being held, right? It can't just be floating. So you could put maybe some bolts or like it's called, they're called anchors. Um, I'm not sure if you know them, but we used to use them a lot in my old job in construction. Um, it's pretty much just a anchor that holds material in place. In this case, it's a pipe. So uh, yeah, so we got those forces right there and that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else. So we can go ahead and get started with the, the linear momentum. So step three, we gotta do X and Y. So let's do X first. Um, now just by looking at this, I don't think there's anything in the X except the one we assumed. Uh, but again, the equation is, now in the old video, I told you don't memorize the equation, just memorize the process because the equation could be, I mean, memorizing this, I'm not sure how hard it is, right? But I guess if you're just learning it, it's good to memorize it. But the point is some of the forces um, in this case, just the x direction is equal to the sum of the linear momentum in the x direction as well. Let's just put x. Um, any inlet is a negative. Any outlet equals positive. And then velocity directions. Directions equal negative positive so what this means is if you have an inlet your velocity term in the mass flow rate is negative if you have an outlet that velocity term is positive and this velocity so you know how mass flow rate is rho av right so that's the what i'm talking about this velocity for an inlet is negative if it's an outlet this velocity is positive and then the second velocity this one it depends along your coordinate system, whether it's negative or positive. So in this case, I could just see this is going to be a positive velocity, right? We're going against the positive y, and there's going to be a negative y, so it's a negative velocity. So just keep that in mind. That's the probably the main point in these problems, okay? You got to know how to determine the signs. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. F of x, we got one force in the x direction. This is a force here. This is a force here, but it's along the y direction only not at an angle um yeah and then there's no linear momentum going in the x or y direction so i mean in the x just the x so it's just f of x here there's nothing going on with linear momentum cool that's the answer for the x component here now let's do the y component um Again, right, same thing. Now, sum of the forces in the y is equal to the sum of the forces. Uh, not sum of the forces, I'm sorry, of the mass flow rates, the linear momentum in the y direction. All right. Again, remember, mass flow rate is rho av. So let's go ahead and do the forces. So we have this force here. Um, this is a pressure force, right? Pressure times area. Um, it's going in the positive y direction, so that's a positive, so it's P1, A1, right, point 0.1, plus, now we got this one, pressure times area 
and again it's going in the positive it's always against the surface so that's how you determine direction p2 a2 and then minus fy the force we're looking for minus fy uh that's equal to the flow rates now so we have the first flow rate here second flow rate here again flow rates only happen at the inlets and exits I mean, you really can't account for an X flow rate going down here. Um, it's just uh, inlets and exits. That's all you got to worry about. Um, cool. So first flow rate, that is rho. We're dealing with water all around, so it's just, I'm not going to put rho water or whatever. A1 and then V1. In this case, it's an inlet. So that's a negative V1. Times the velocity um, in the positive or negative direction. In this case, it's going into, I mean, along the y direction. So that's a positive V1. You could always just use the angle, right? Um, I know I mentioned I was gonna bring up the angle, so it would have been V1 cosine. If you're gonna do the angle, that's, re that's the reason I don't do angles, because then you gotta um, leave this alone. It's easier to just assume in the positive y, or not assume, I'm sorry, just to see in the positive or negative y um, if you don't want to see it that way just stick to the angle cosine of uh, in this case it's zero right um, the the vector here is going along the positive y at a zero angle so cosine zero is just positive one and that's what that's where the angle comes into play you'll see the next one now let's do the next one row a v row a2 it's the same area so it doesn't matter um, this is a, which one's this one again? It's an outlet. So it's a ne uh, positive V1, right? Outlets are positive. And then if you want to do the angle, just put V1 or I'm sorry, V2, V2. If you want to do the angle, just put V2. Don't worry about the left or right. And then just do cosine of the angle. Cosine of 180 is negative one, right? This is this angle here. This is the positive y it's going this way so this angle here is theta 180 and that will give you the negative one but again i don't like to use angles for that reason i just like to see it visually we're going against the positive y which is at a going directly backwards so that's negative b2 like i said it's up to you if you want to use the angle or not i'm not a fan of it but who knows maybe you'll see it better um Cool. So uh, we got everything. Um, there's no. There's only two inlets. Out, um, inlets. One inlet. One exit. So one and two. There's a pressure here. Pressure here in the force. So pressure. Pressure force. And we're good. We just plug and chug. So this right here is two hundred ten thousand. Right. This here is zero point zero nine. Again, meter squared. Newton per meter squared. You'll get a newton. Just make sure all your units. I guess in this case, right? Make sure it's in meters squared. Uh, plus, this is 165,000 times 0 0.009. I don't like doing all that factoring uh, the area out if they're the same. I don't know, for some reason it just confuses me. Minus, I rather really just plug in. And then I hate um, when they move everything to one side and then it's just leaving FY alone. For some reason, for me, that's super confusing. I like to just plug it in the way I see it. So make sure I don't do a mistake when I move things around. But that's up to you. Uh, this is a thousand density, right? Times area. Uh, negative V1. V1's 15. Um, negative 15 times 15 again, right? Negative V1, V1. Plus a thousand times zero point zero zero nine times cool. Now this one is positive fifteen. This one is negative fifteen. All right. Um, if you do the math, you'll get here eighteen ninety plus fourteen eighty five minus F Y is equal to negative 2025 minus 2025 again. Um, do some more math, 3375 
is equal, uh, no, sorry, minus Fy is equal to negative 40, 50. Do more math. Fy is 7, 4, 2, 5 newtons. So it's positive, meaning we assumed correctly. Um, if I would have gotten a negative number, all that means is that this force is actually going in the positive y direction. Now, I kind of use logic, right? For some reason, if water is flowing through this pipe and this pipe, I imagine all the force is coming this way. I, it really doesn't matter. You don't even need to use logic. At the end of the day, it should work itself out. So that just means F of Y is 7,425 newtons in the pot, in the negative Y, I'm sorry. Well, I'm tripping. So we assume correctly in the negative Y. So that's the answer. Again, um, I'll do a problem where you don't have perfect angles like this, 180 along the y direction. And in this case, um, f of x was zero, pretty straightforward. Um, but they do get pretty crazy. And most likely you will see an angle on the exam. So practice those instead of these. But this is just good to know. But that's the answer.